Hello and welcome back to Sci-Tai Tech. In this video, I'm going to do an experiment with making conductive paint and I'm going to use various materials to see which one works the best and see which one's the most conductive. Let's get started. <laughs> I am right here with the 6 volt lantern battery and what I need to do is I need to open it up and extract the carbon electrode rods. Let's get started. First what I need to do is take this slit screwdriver and place it right onto the seams. Prying it open won't work so what I'm going to do is take a small hammer and tap it out. And there, the seal is now cracked. Open it up and pull out the battery cells that are inside. Hmm. That's very interesting looking. Pull it out just like this. And as you can see, it is just simply four battery cells, which means I'll have four carbon electrode rods. Next, what I'm going to do is just simply cut all the wires. And I'm going to wear gloves because manganese dioxide is very messy. And also have a face shield for protection and a face mask because you don't want to breathe the particles of graphite. Take some pliers and pull out the carbon electrode rod with using a twisting motion. Finish pulling it out with using my hand. And as you can see, wearing gloves is necessary. You get this sticky stuff on your hands. And there, I have the carbon electrode rod. Now repeat the same process three more times. And there, I have all four carbon electrode rods. Next, what I need to do is take the carbon electrode and just simply wash off the manganese dioxide that's on it. Next, I'm going to take a lighter and burn off the wax coating that is on the carbon electrode rod. And as you can see from the heat, you can see the wax is starting to melt and starting to burn. And one important thing I must say, you should do this in a well ventilated area because the smoke will irritate your eyes. Next, take a paper towel and wipe off the excess burnt wax. And as you can see, this side of the carbon rod is now clean. What I need to do is repeat the same process on the opposite end. And there, the carbon electrode rod is now clean. Next, I'm going to take a mortar and pester. Take the carbon electrode rod, place it inside, and smash it. And grind it up into a fine powder. And there, as you can see, I have a fine powder. Next, I'm going to transfer this powder into this jar. Carefully, don't spill. And there, I have now fine graphite powder dust ready to use. And these are the items I'm going to use for this experiment. And as you can see, these three items right here, I'm going to see how conductive they can be. Combining the graphite with distilled water, combining the graphite with salt and distilled water, combine the graphite with just glue, and I want to see how those three methods are and see which one's most conductive, and then combine glue, distilled water, and salt with the graphite, and see if all four mix together, and see how conductive that is. First experiment is going to be the graphite in distilled water. And now add a small amount of distilled water. Put a few drops in to see if I can turn this into a paste. How interesting the water actually beads up. Add some more water. Hmm, that's very interesting. Apparently the surface tension on water is very high. I'm going to try to see if I can physically break it. And as you can see, it's not mixing. Add more water is not really the solution. This also tells me that graphite is not at all water soluble. This is very interesting. Mix it around and you can see that physically breaking the surface tension does not work. What I'm going to do is I have some dish soap. I'm going to put a little bit of dish soap because dish soap has the opposite polar effect that's on the membrane on water and it will cause the water to break apart and cause it to break its surface tension. 
adding a little bit of soap should allow this to mix. There, right away, as you can see, it works instantly. Surface tension is breaking. As you can see, it's completely breaking apart. So now, let us see if this mixes. And as you can see, it's starting to work. However, I put too much water, so what I need to do is add a little bit more graphite to make the paste a little bit thicker. I have right here this second batch that I'm going to prepare to use for salt water. I'm going to repeat the same process with using dish soap, and I'm going to add salt into this batch for the salt water method. Next, I'm going to extract a little bit of this wet graphite and drop it into this a little bit drier graphite. Hopefully, I can make a paste out of this. Oh, as you can see, I made a little bit of a paste. I'm going to try the really wet solution and see how that looks. That looks okay. I'm going to try this pasty solution of mostly graphite powder and wet it a little bit and see how that looks. Oh, much thicker. Very good. Okay, that comes out much better. Okay, so now I'm going to try the thicker one and make a line where it's just the water method. Technically, it's water, dish soap, and graphite. Three ingredients for this first method. And I have right here this three volt button cell battery. And I'm gonna go and measure where the leads are, so that way I have an idea of how far the lines should be put apart. And I'm gonna draw the lines over to this LED. Put the graphite onto the leads of the LED. And I'll take the battery and place it onto it and see if it lights up. As you can see, it works. The LED lights up. Not very bright. That's because using this much graphite has a very high resistance. And the solution may not be conductive enough. With that theory of resistance, I should be able to use this 9 volt battery without damaging the LED. And there, as you can see, the LED lights up brighter and the LED is not damaged. Perfect. As you can see, this works very well. Next, what I need to do is measure the resistance with using a multimeter, because I'm curious to see how much resistance this has. And as you can see, the resistance measures up to 10 kilo ohms. Now measure the second line and see what that shows. And as you can see, this line here has higher resistance. This measures at 70 kilo ohms. And now let's try the salt water method. Sprinkle in some salt crystals in the water graphite. Let it dissolve and then paint out the two lines. Place a battery and LED. Whoops, I accidentally bridged those two lines. So I'm gonna go ahead and draw out the two lines again. Paint it so it comes out nice and thick to see if I can make it more conductive. Place in the three volt button cell battery, and there, as you can see, the LED lights up, and it actually looks a little bit brighter. Very nice. So as you can see, the salt water method is a little bit more conductive. Repeat the same process with the nine volt battery, and wow, it is much brighter. Still not damaging the LED, so the resistance is still there, but a little bit less. Now take some measurements. This line here is about 50, 50 kilo ohm resistance, 47 to 50. And then the second line is about 30 kilo ohm resistance. So far, the salt water method is more conductive. Next, I'm gonna test out the third method. Take some of the graphite and mix it with this white glue. As you can see, the white glue method mixes with the graphite better. It comes out more of a paste and it does not separate. And now let's go ahead and test out this method and see how conductive this is. And as you can see, this paints very well, much nicer than the other two methods. The paint comes out much thicker and more consistent. Take the 3 volt button cell battery. Oh, as you can see, the LED lights up. Not that bright, 
but it still lights up. Now I can take the 9 volt battery and test it out. Okay, as you can see, it lights up a little bit brighter. Not as bright as the salt water method, but it still lights up very well. This tells me that there is probably more resistance. Take a measurement. How interesting, it's about 7 kilo ohms. Second one, 7 kilo ohms, which tells me this method is far more consistent. So this is the true resistance of this method. I think the other method was not contacting very well and was causing it to fluctuate too much. This method seems to work a lot better. And now it's time to test out the fourth method. Let's combine everything together. Basically, this contains salt, distilled water, glue, and dish soap. So only five ingredients. Mix it all together, paint down the LED, and paint two lines. Hmm, this looks actually very clean and very nice. Now, let's see how conductive it is. Oh, how interesting. Using 3 volts, the LED is a little bit brighter. Okay, so this is very good. Take the 9 volt battery, and as you can see, it's extremely bright. Wow, this is very good. This method is extremely conductive. And I'll take a measurement. And as you can see, it's about 47 kilo ohms. The second line. About 50 kilo ohms. Maybe 60. Mm, I would rather say about 30 kilo ohms. And as you can see, this makes a very nice paste. Very nice consistency. Ingredient to be able to make perfect conductive paint is use graphite, mixed with water, mixed with glue, mixed with dish soap, mixed with salt. Combining that all together gives you very low resistance paint and allows it to uh, stick better and have a better pasty consistency. And there you have it. Now you know how to make your very own graphite paint with using very simple household products and being able to make conductive paint. And there you have it. Thank you for watching Site High Tech. I hope you learned something new. And don't forget to like and subscribe. And of course, click the bell icon to be notified of future Site High Tech videos. Till the next tech, goodbye.